good money. So, in another episode, we have Jill Skilling with us, and she has a lot um, to tell us and a wonderful story as her own entrepreneurial journey. So, can you introduce yourself and tell us about you? Yeah, sure. Well, thank you again for having me on your podcast. Um, I've gotten to know you over the past few months, and so it, uh, I was honored um, to be on your podcast. So um, anything thank I can you. to support you, I'm super thrilled. Um, like you said, my name is Judy Skilling. I am a certified high-performance coach as well as a Navy veteran. Um, I served in the Navy for seven years as a hospital corpsman, and I um, got into high performance coaching and I work with military and veteran entrepreneurs. I help them maximize their productivity by minimizing distractions and I uh, help them enhance their wellness so that we have, you know, you have increased energy on a day-to-day -day basis as well as maintain that healthy work-life balance that we all strive to achieve. And I do that through a proven systematic science-backed um, program that is geared towards achieving results catered towards the habits of high performers. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. And and that's wonderful. And I actually um, participated in your program before. Um, and you had, like, so many wonderful techniques and that it just help you improve um, your day. Because we need that little break every once in a while to recharge and get keep going on the energy. So yeah. maybe you can share a little bit about that. Like what's the importance of somebody as an entrepreneur that um, they need to make, maintain some kind of balance in the life. Um, and, you know, hiring a high performance coach like you uh, can be one of the ways to uh, achieve that. Yeah, no, that's a great point, uh, Nerika. Like, you know, um, as a military, you know, as a veteran, we have always been trained, of course, to just push and go and, you know, persevere no matter at all cost. And so we kind of use that same kind of mentality or what I've noticed in some of the people that I've worked with, use that same mentality in, in the world of entrepreneurship. You go, 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 you know, at whatever cost. And sometimes you realize that you're jeopardizing your relationships when you're doing that, you're jeopardizing your health. You know, and um, all for the sacrifice of, you know, building a business, getting things started. And what I help people do is to balance not only the effort and the work that they're doing, but also taking time to recharge and to, you know, really focus on their own abilities to where they can maximize what they're really good at and um, delegating things that they're not so great at. Uh, when, when we did your session, it was absolutely wonderful because those simple techniques were actionable things that you could use like right now. Like, what can I do today? And, and it's not something that is, well, maybe you can implement this in a week's time or two weeks time, you know, and work with people. It's about what can we do today? And what can we do moving forward into generating the results that you want without sacrificing, you know, um, your wellness, sacrificing your relationships? Because as a high performer, we look at everything holistically, right? We want to make sure that you're living a life of full engagement, full joy, you know, confidence, and you are showing up as your best self in all areas of your life, your career, your relationships, your health, you know, um, any, the missions that you have, your career mission, as well as your emotional and mental and physical well-being. And, and that's what I work with people is attaining a full spectrum of engagement, you know, in all of those um, aspects of our lives. And when you're able to do that, it's absolutely wonderful. And it's really great. And, you know, um, but that requires, you know, somebody like me to help guide you to implement because there will be roadblocks along the way, you know, as you want to, you know, as you achieve that level of success that all of us love to and and yes and that's so true right and you know especially if you're a veteran entrepreneur um most likely you're dealing some kind of ptsd uh related that you know your 
you use stress as a tool and, and you used to push and push and push, um, get a lot of things accomplished, uh, but sometimes, you know, it has a cost, right? Um, so we need that space. We need that space to, to recharge. Yeah, exactly. So can you tell us how you got started on this field? Yeah, of course. Um, so after I got out of the military, uh, I, I loved being in the medical field. You know, I was a corpsman, I absolutely loved it. I got out of the military and I went to nursing school and I got my bachelor's in nursing in Texas. And during that time I met um, and married, uh, you know, my husband and we moved out of Texas. We went to Colorado. And a couple of years into our marriage, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with uh, stage four colon cancer at the age of 25. Um, at the age of his diagnosis, we also had a toddler. She was less than a year old. She was like 10 months old. And he was also uh, military. He was Army National Guard, um, unfortunately, with this diagnosis. And so that changed everything. Um, now it's just me. I am the sole income provider, taking care of my husband, taking care of my daughter, and making sure that our bills are paid. And it was a very intense and stressful, you know, cancer battle that I was with him. Um, it lasted for about five years until he unfortunately lost his battle in the winter of 2017. Um, Sorry to hear that. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it was definitely a, a stressful and very um, intense period of time. And I remember one day I was, at, I was at work as an emergency room nurse, and this is before I got into coaching. Um, he was at home with our daughter. Um, we couldn't afford childcare at the time. And I got a text. Um, I had my phone with me and we weren't supposed to have our phones, you know, on him, but you know, I had my phone on me and I felt it vibrate. And I went into like one of the supply rooms and I checked my phone and he texted me saying, I've just passed out. I'm on the floor. You know, um, I don't know how long I've been. I, I just woke up or something like that. And um, that to me was, not only scary because you know he's watching our daughter but how long you know all these thoughts started coming into my head anyway i went to talk to my manager i explained what was going on and they let me go home and i i'm driving home and i just remember thinking to myself i don't want to be in this position again i don't want to sacrifice or having to choose between work and family you know um this or that um and I just remember thinking I've got to do something and you know I got home and, and checked on him and fortunately he was okay he didn't like you know have any wounds or anything but he's like I don't feel so good I think I need to go to the hospital and here we go we're packing up our stuff and we're going to the hospital again um, and it happened like that so many times and um, it led me to think you know what could I do that I could be there more for my family and um, coaching you know came came into my world um, when I understood what coaching was this was a few months before he had passed. When I understood what coaching was, I was like, this, this is, this is what I want to do. I still can help people. I can still help people in a positive and uplifting way. Um, this is what I want to do. And so after, um, after losing my husband, I really just shifted my focus into coaching. And I kind of started to step back from nursing. Um, I love nursing. It's really great. But I felt my life changing in um in that point of view. And so I started off in transformational and spiritual coaching in terms of like law of attraction and universal laws and manifestation and things like that too. And um, it worked in terms of what I wanted to manifest in my life. It really didn't work in terms of me like, hey, let me work with you to create things in your life. It was really hard for me to communicate that. And then I came across Brendan Burchard and, and his high performance. And when I learned a lot about what his, you know, his theories and his high performance. I always saw myself as a high performer anyway. I was like this, I love this. I love this. And I just like consumed all of his material. I was like, how do I be a coach? Like that's, that's what I want to do. So I became certified in high performance coaching in um, 2018 and have started my business and had, you know, I've had it on a side hustle for the past year or so while I was kind of transitioning into nursing and, um, decided to make the leap into doing this full time last year. And it's been absolutely amazing. I love the people I'm working with, the changes that I've, you know, seen people do and really just giving back to the military and veteran community just because I'm, a, that that's my, 
you know, that's my heart, especially with my late husband's experience and my experience and the experience that I've had in working with veterans and how it's um, an underserved population and knowing that like these principles can be so powerful when you know how to use them and it complements everything that we learn in the military that it's just, it's amazing. And um, the clients that I've worked with, they've, you know, had an increased productivity, you know, at least 50% and more, you know, people that I've worked with have had um, implemented daily habits to where they've gotten themselves in better shape. Um, they, you know, are able to spend more time with family and they're still able to focus on their business. And, and like I said, we work together and, um, you know, you had really great results from, from our session. And it was just a snippet of what I, you know, what I work with clients on. So that is my passion right now. And I absolutely love, love, love what I do. And, you know, um, in doing this business and and uh, also creating content and really just getting my voice out there and getting my message into, you know, um, serving the veteran and military community. So that's kind of how coaching found me and the longer sense, how coaching found me. And um, I'm grateful for every single, I'm grateful for every single moment of it. Absolutely. And that's a great, no? you find your passion and you were able to use your experience from the military and from your life experience um, to help others with your skills exactly. and your education. And that's amazing, you know. Yeah. And like yeah. I say, uh, use the snippet uh, that we went through together. Um, it really helped me out a lot. Um, you know, and I've and I seen uh, Brenda Boucher um, some of his stuff and he's amazing so I can yeah. imagine I can imagine how you know profound um, it can be because you need all the tools that you can get as an entrepreneur you need to be able to recharge you need to get all the automation uh, get the the right people on place Um but you need to remember to take care of yourself as well. Right. And so his, you can keep going. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, and his, and his program really, um, you know, really focuses on, you know, how do you show up as a better person? How do you fully engage with the things that you're doing? Even if you're not too thrilled about your day-to-day -day job, you know, how can you still be engaged with that? How can you still, you know, um, approach that from, a mindset of like, okay, I'm not too thrilled about doing this, but what about this can I get excited about? You know, um, in my nursing field, because I still used these high performance habits and these mindsets while I was working in, you know, my nursing job, when you're in the nursing or medical field in general, it can be very negative. It can be very toxic. It can be very draining, you know, working 12, 13 hour days, um, and physically, emotionally, mentally, and stressful, especially working in the emergency room. And, you know, during this pandemic of COVID, it's even more stressful. And, um, but using these, you know, using these principles within my own life of like, okay, yes, I do have to go to work, but what is it about work that I can be really excited about today? Or what is it today that I can be, you know, who can I engage with or who can I pay a compliment to? Or how can I make a patient's life feel a little bit better? You know, and really just approaching it on that kind of mindset by using those principles um, has helped shift how I'm approaching situations every single day. Um, and that I think is what's pivotal in, in using these techniques um, and these high performance principles um, in not only as an entrepreneur, but just in your day-to-day -day life too, you know, because whatever you do in your professional life, of course, goes into your personal life and vice versa, right? Everything that you're doing in your personal life bleeds into your professional life. And it's just this, this constant ebb and flow, everything that you're doing and both aspects, they definitely do meld. Yeah. And that's why we had to find our happy place. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. so we can get over from happiness, yeah. you know, let's Grumpiness, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, if you're grumpy, your shoulder will get grumpy, and then you get grumpier. So yes, <laughs> and it's not like you know taking you know it's not like finding your happy place and putting on a plastic smile like I'm happy, but you're genuinely soulful happy. And I think that is the difference. It's like you know I 
I feel joy about what it is that I'm doing. You know, I feel, you know, you're radiating and you're really emanating that kind of like, no, I feel genuinely happy about what it is that I'm doing. And it, yeah, everybody around you picks up on that. You know, your teammates, your kids, your family, your spouse, everybody. So, um, and when you, when you watch Brendan's training, you even pick up on that through the video, <laughs> you know, in some of his work. So. But it's exciting. Yes, it's super exciting. Um, so you mentioned that you also do um, content. I know you just got published in Entrepreneur um, yeah. talking about the same topic. So where can people find you in there and where they can read uh, more about you? Yeah, um, so I've had, um, if you head to my website, it's judyskilling.com. Um, there you'll find, um, you know, not only the programs that I'm offered, but also some of the content that I've, you, that I've gotten published. So I've been an entrepreneur, like you've just mentioned, um, Medium, which is a really great place to find some of my work and Thrive Global and, and some other things. I'm in the process of creating some uh, tangible courses that are like t less than 30 minutes. And I'm in the process of creating uh, uh, about five courses right now in terms of um, uh, based off of my ebook, which is for free, um, but it's the five base, uh, five hidden leaders, uh, five hidden military skills to be a successful entrepreneur. And so I've broken down each, each um, skill into a course, a mini course, so to speak. And so that should be um, released here in the next few weeks before, um, before the end of January, I'm hoping. <laughs> so, um, so I'm really excited about that. I've already got my first course done. I just have to record it and get it out. That's there. exciting. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about it. Yeah. And um, these courses talk about uh, resilience, leadership, consistency, you know, adaptability and being resourceful. Um, and I think those, there you go. I've just told you the five hidden skills. <laughs> like, so you don't need to get the ebook now. <laughs> you know <laughs> so, yeah I, I sure you want you have to read it because it's one thing to talk about resilience but it's actually another thing to experience it and to practice it um, because it's easy to get down when there's a challenge and an obstacle that comes your way usually yeah. you have like three or five coming your way at the same time um, so Finding that um, and learning the skills of, of maintaining it is very important. And I know that military kind of train you on that. So that's something that we had the advantage as veterans mm -hmm. um, that we've been training from day one on, on being resilient and being flexible. Um, exactly. That's all the people don't. You know, they have to learn the hard way. And it's easy to get overwhelmed. So I'm glad you focused on that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, and that's something that we, yeah, like you just said so beautifully, um, mm -hmm. resilience is just one of those things that you just, you learn and you repeat it over and over and over again through the different experiences that you have while you're in your military um, career. Um, even going all the way back to like boot camp, for example, you know, like you just, you get through the exercises, you get through the physical endurance, you get through the mental challenges that you come up against when you're, you know, um, in boot camp, for example, as well as like when you're deployed, you know, and you are either on deployment on a ship or on ground or whatever, you, you, you tap into that skill of being resilient, because that is what's helping you push through whatever situation you're in. And so, um, to make a course a little bit more depth into like, okay, for somebody who isn't coming from the military, how do you develop the skill of resilience? You know, how do you um, continuously develop it and you can tap into it when you are in situations where it, it's required. So, um, so that's what my course is gonna be talking about. And these are all like separate courses in those five areas. And so I'm super excited about like, you know, creating it and really just being of service and and uh, you know, educating people on um, you know how that skill has shown up in my business and in my life, um, and uh, the results of it as using that skill. 
Can you mention that again? Oh, that's something you wanted to go look at. So, I, I cash resilience and what was the other five? Yeah, so the uh, other four? so resilience, um, leadership, uh, consistency, adaptability, and resourcefulness. Okay, and yes, and no, everybody can be a leader, right? There's a lot of different oh, no. styles of leaders. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. No. <laughs> I think our election has just proven that. <laughs> yeah, you know, some some yeah. people confuse being a leader with being in charge. Uh, in charge, calling the shots, all the things. But you know, being a leader is actually more than that. It's actually knowing when to delegate, mm -hmm. knowing when to empower other people. Mm -hmm. Um. So yes, that's something that is very much needed yeah um, and the leadership is the first one i'm creating and i've just finished creating that like this morning and i just have to record it and so in that leadership i i break it down even more and i talk about 10 basic you know basic leadership skills you know because if you really want to learn about leadership you go follow john maxwell he is like the guy on leadership and then some, you know, so if you really wanted to study leadership principles, mythology, mythologies and the different styles and all this other stuff, like you go find John Maxwell. But what I just bring to the table, especially as an entrepreneur who might be starting out, either they're a veteran or not, um, what are the basic leadership skills that you just need to, to really learn um, and to start to kind of like incorporate? And, and I, just, I just share with you 10 basic ones that okay, if you just start working on five, you're already ahead of the curve, you know, from people who are just like, today I'm going to start a business. Let's go, you know, <laughs> like, because eventually you are the leader in your business. You are an entrepreneur. So by default, you are a leader. And it all depends on how big and how wide you want to grow your business and how of an effective leadership you can be in. Yeah, in any way, the same way that you want to be treated. Exactly. You know, and some of these skills I use, you know, I'm a solopreneur, but I use them to like, okay, am I showing up as a good leader to myself? You know, yeah, I, I don't have a team yet, but um, these skills are important for me. You know, how am I communicating with other people that I might need to, you know, my clients or people who I need to work with? So it, it's, um, so that, yeah, so I've got some really- You have a daughter, right? Yep. I'm sorry? You you are a leader. You have a daughter, and she's yeah, following exactly. your example. So, you um, leadership is not only about business; it's also in your personal life. You you setting a, a role, an example to follow, and you want to make sure that it's the right example to follow. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, it, it overlaps. Yeah, it overlaps for personal. And business, I mean, is it going to be on your website? Um, yeah, so so these courses will be on my website. Once they're created and up, they will be on my website um, under products once I get to that point. Um, so yeah, so all these uh, courses, they're small, bite-sized courses. Probably all of them are less than 30 minutes. Um, and it's a quick way for you to kind of just understand these specific skills and how to use them right away because we're all about action. Like, let's go now. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and uh, they will be up on my website here within the next, uh, within the month. So is there going to be like assessment where it will tell you, okay, what is the leadership style that you have now and what you want to develop later? No, no, no assessments in terms of that. Um, this is more so of an educational type of course. Like, um, so, because I'm not, I'm not certified in leadership or anything like that. I do use leadership within some of my coaching, but um, I don't feel that I'm qualified yet to assess somebody's leadership skills and techniques and things like that too. Um, so these are just courses. Hey, you want to learn about this? And this is for the basic, you know, entrepreneur. So and that's very important. Educational courses. Yeah. It's a starting point. Not where you get. Point. A starting exactly. point where you get the right information and 
you know, and you start adapting some of those practices. Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah. And we're all, I'm all about implementation. I'm all about like, let me just, you know, tell you what you need to know, go and do it and let me know how it goes. You know, know, let me know how the results turn out for you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So super excited. Okay. Um, so you share some, um, any books or any, um, any other uh, little nuggets that you want to share um, or any book that, that, that help you get where you are right now that you would recommend um, to somebody that's just starting up right now? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Um, that is, I love that question because <laughs> I love to read. <laughs> and, <Yeah. laughs> and so I like, I go through books, like I go through water, <laughs> like I'm always consuming books. And I love, love, love to read. Um, I feel like bits and pieces have always helped me throughout my journey. Um, You know, I really learned something from here and learned something from here. One of my most favorite ones um, in in terms of, this is kind of just going into uh, the universal, um, the universal law or the, you know, understanding the universal aspects. Um, this is kind of just going into that, but one of my most favorite books is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And that is an absolutely amazing book. Um, I heard it on Audible and um, I couldn't let it, I couldn't put it down. And it's narrated by Jeremy Irons, which has, which is an amazing voice anyway. So the book is entertaining, but that to me was really good because um, it's a parable and it really just helped me understand that um, you're always you're always taken care of in terms of you know um, the the universe and spirituality and things like that too. Um, but that was probably that's probably one of my most my most favorite books in terms of that stuff. If we're talking about let's say business books and um, mindset books, um, I would say. Uh, the one that I just read, but that's also to spirituality. <laughs> but um, uh, um, oh my gosh, I'm just drawing a blank. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, it's a um, yeah. I'm sorry. I I'm drawing a blank. I don't have any. <laughs> I think anything by Brandon Burchard is always really good too because he's he's a very good writer. Um, in terms of like, uh, you know, mindset and things like that too, in terms of improving your life and mindset and incorporating that. Um, and the book that uh, I'm currently, I'm currently reading um, a book called Endurance. Um, it talks about the South Pole um, exploration and about how a guy led his team of 27 men to the Antarctic to, um, to, uh, to go to the South Pole because nobody had ever like traveled that far before or in that kind of terrain. And they all survived, I think, um, from this from this expedition. And so that's the book that I'm currently reading right now. It was it's in a book club. So I was like, that sounds pretty cool. So it's called Endurance. So I'm so I'm interested to finish that and see how that goes. I need to check it out. You know, I know my my list of books to read has getting longer and longer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, finding the time. <laughs> yeah. To yeah. Read that. <laughs> yeah. I think I need to you put know, myself but, on um, like on a. Uh, but yeah, there's so many. Um. Like what? Like in a. The other the the book it just came to my mind. It's called Happy Pocket Full of Money. Um that's a really good book in terms of, you know, quantum physics, but also tapping into like how the universe works and how you can achieve what you want and how everything is vibration and energy and that kind of stuff, which I really do love um, understanding how the world works, but it's called happy pocket full of money. um, And that's a really good, powerful book. That's the one I was just thinking of. I had a hard time thinking of. Yeah. uh... (laughs) 
I'm going to check it out. I haven't uh, read any of those, so definitely my list just got a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check it out. I love to read. Um, oh yeah. You know, I, I think you know when there's there's a good book. Sometimes we talk about mentors that we can find mentors today, uh, but we can also find mentors in books, uh, people that have passed along, but the knowledge and their and the wisdom can inspire. Uh, you know, it, it's just the concepts that you take it so they're very important yeah completely and like i said uh you know i just i read uh, kindle on my phone is probably the most addictive app that i'm on right now because <laughs> i'm just downloading books all the time <laughs> and uh it's it, but it's good i mean i if you're not growing you're you're you know you need to continuously be growing and especially for something that i do um the books that i read are show up in the sessions that i have with my clients you know, so it's helping me become not only a better coach, but, you know, how can I pass on resources that I know it's going to help this client? Like, hey, you should probably check out this book, you know, and giving them the additional resources or, hey, you should check out, you know, this, this, because this is really helpful or this is in relation to what we're talking about. Um, and so I found that to be, you know, helpful in my work that I do for sure. Yeah, I remember like I, the first book, uh, one of the first book I was a child that I read um, it was this old book called in Spanish A Real Man and it was a, a story of survival somebody that lost their legs uh, their feet for frostbite and he still moved on and, and, and I love the story so much because it was a pilot and without feet two feet he still learned how to fly again That's awesome. I like I like that's so such a sample to follow because sometimes um, life take you down. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you can keep going. You know, there's a really good one called um, "Can't Hurt Me" by David Goggins. Um, I don't know. I I've not read the book, but I heard uh, I heard it on Audible. Um, and "Can't Hurt Me" by David Goggins. If you've not been familiar with it, it talks about his his journey he's also a veteran he was a seal and he's the first person in the military to have gone to um army ranger school seal training and um i think an air force uh, air force training as well too um the guy is like a badass like <laughs> hands down when you listen to the book i mean of course uh he's you know he's a military person or veteran now um but he swears a lot in this audio book so if you don't mind the swearing and you can look past that, um, then it's actually a really good book, but it's pretty much like a biography of how he grew up, all of his, um, you know, struggles that he had faced when he was, you know, father that beat him, you know, him and his mom and all this other stuff and, and talks about his journey as a, uh, you know, going through Bud's training. And then he, you know, it's basically an autobiography. But like, when I listened to that book, I'm like, dang, like, what else can this guy not do? Like he's an ultra marathon or he's completed in a hundred ultra marathons and ultra marathon is a marathon that's a hundred miles. So he's competed in like dozens and dozens of them around the world. Anyway, it's a really good, powerful book in terms of like resilience that I was just mentioning. And, you know, you just, you just do it, you know, and all the odds stacked up against him and he still was able to persevere and accomplish the amazing thing that things that he does. And he's just like, I'm just a normal human being like me and you, you know, there's nothing special about me, but it's an amazing, amazing book. So that one, that one. Yeah. I definitely will go to check it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's been amazing having you here as a guest. Uh, I'm really looking forward to hear more and to uh, see your course launching. So yeah. thank you. Um, and you're welcome to come back anytime. Awesome. <laughs> of course. I'd be, pleased. I'd be honored to come back anytime. <laughs> All right.